I'm Alan Collins. I want to welcome Sheriff Joe Arpaio, Sheriff of Maricopa County, Arizona. You are known as the toughest sheriff in America by your own admission, sir. Um, you, watch this now. And in the wake of these mass shootings, you want 250,000 citizens to have guns? First of all, it's not my own admission. <laughs> that was given to me by, by the media. But anyway, I was being a little cute there. But okay, you want you want a quarter of a million people armed. Explain, please. Well, first of all, I started the uh, mall program to, to protect the uh, shoppers when they go shopping. Uh, I did that 22 years ago. We launched that again using a volunteer armed posse. Never had any problems. But now we're living in a different uh, situation with the international terror and all of schools and churches, all of things, you know, people shooting. And you think more guns are the answer? More guns in the hands of more people you think are the answer? Well, we have concealed weapons uh, laws here. Actually, we're very liberal here in Arizona. Uh, we have over uh, 250,000 uh, people with concealed weapons. And my thought on this is uh, if you're in a situation uh, where you have uh, large crowds and uh, someone pulls a gun and you have someone with a concealed weapon, maybe that person can save many, many lives before long. Couldn't the opposite happen, uh, that you actually that more lives are taken with untrained shooters who are not prepared to be in such a situation? I haven't seen any statistics on that across the nation. Have you? I you know Steve Henry, that. the chief deputy of the Pinal County Sheriff's Office, who says untrained gun owners could add to chaotic situations at these events, increasing the risk to innocent bystanders. That's his problem. He doesn't run this office. That's Bunnell County. I don't... Yeah. Uh, we're, we're the th third largest sheriff's office in the United States. I understand. But his, he also says sometimes it's not proper to pull the trigger because the collateral damage isn't worth it. We don't want to walk into a gunfight between them. Let me, let me put it this way. We do have uh, all, uh, all my deputies off-duty carry weapons. I expect them to take action on these type of situations. They're in civilian clothes. And I also have confidence in those that uh, have concealed weapons. Many of them have been trained. But when you're in a situation when people, I'm not going to say assassinate, but that's not a bad word to use when they're shooting people on the floor. And here you have a situation. You may have someone uh, with a weapon that will do something to that guy, whether they have to shoot him or not, and, and save all those lives before law enforcement shows up. I think this is very important. Steve Henry, like you, a sheriff, says we don't want to walk into a gunfight between people, much less a gunfight where people are not trained. Is that not a? Wouldn't that be a concern for authorities like yourself? Well, you know what? Uh, I, I'm not going to get into the training of these uh, people that have the guns, but I would say many are trained. Uh, but we haven't had any incident in Arizona of any one carrying concealed weapons shooting uh, people. Uh, so I think it's been uh, very successful as a deterrence here, and we haven't had any, uh, thank God, any major incidents like you see across our uh, country and you see overseas. So something's working here in Arizona. I mean, what you saw yesterday in San Bernardino, California, where you have a guys with thousands of rounds of ammunition and pipe bombs in his house, should we have a country where this is, that anybody can get this kind of ammunition and store it in their homes? Is that not a toxic environment? Well, you know, uh, guns aren't the only things that kill. You have bombs. A guy sent me a bomb to uh, blow me up. Fortunately, we caught the guy. So you can, you know, you can uh, do mass destruction, not just with a uh, weapon. You know that. Uh, but uh, that's a different issue. Yeah, but it's hard to conceal a bomb. Also, uh, you, you've referred to ISIL, ISIS, uh, as a reason gun owners should be on the lookout. Do you honestly think that American gun owners, if more Americans were armed, it would be a deterrent to a group you know like what? ISIS? I think when I had the press conference, by the way, my press conference was five, six days ago before the incident had just happened when I said I want to uh, help the posse and help the people by uh, utilizing those that have concealed weapons to take action during a mass situation that's been occurring. And I still stick by that. But that's something that that person has, or persons have to make up their mind when they confront these uh I guess you talk about the two in California, which is very unusual. But I can't say uh, uh, whether you, we had a sharpshooter there with a concealed weapon or a military that could take these two guys down. That one was, was a little unusual that occurred, Alan. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, a, a piece of legislation which Republicans won't act on, which would 
deter people on the terror watch list from getting guns. Carly Fiorina said today she doesn't want legislation. She doesn't. She doesn't want to stop people on the terror watch list from getting guns. Her reasoning being people sometimes on that list wrongfully. Do, would you acknowledge that if you're on the terror watch list, you should not be able to get arms? If you're on the watch list, yeah. I mean, well, I, I, I think uh, I think every every situation is separate. You have to have uh, maybe a history or a probable cause. I can go on and on. But if you're on the terror watch list, the State Department's terror watch list, and and you know, there's an attempt. Democrats would like to see a piece of legislation that would prevent anybody on that list from getting a gun. Republicans don't want that. Wouldn't it make sense? And the NRA doesn't want it. Just, if you're on the terror watch list. Should you be able to get a gun? Well, you know what? Uh, has that person been convicted of anything? We have a lot of people in the United States that may be uh, suspect, but if they haven't been convicted of a felon, felony and so on, they can still get guns. So if you're on a terror watch list, you should still be able to get a gun. If the State Department is watching you, concerned about you, you're on a list. In terms of getting on an airplane, you're on the terror watch list, but you should be able to get a gun. Well, once again, it depends on the circumstances. I'm, I'm not uh, yeah. you're talking about a blanket blanket policy. Yeah. So, well, right. I don't know. Uh, if uh, somebody suspected of shooting uh, uh, somebody and uh, you'd have no evidence to convict them or so on, should that guy be able to get a gun? I guess well, I'm just I'm in a terrible watch list. If the State Department them. has enough suspicion of you that you're on a te- they're watching you, you're on a terror watch list, they're concerned you might commit an act of terror. I'm wondering if that's someone who should get a gun in this country. And uh, well, you know, well, but, if that's the case, maybe they ought to uh, work on these suspects and bring them to justice. Forget the gun issue, but the, yeah. if they are terrorists, first of all, they shouldn't be coming across uh, the borders to begin with. They ought to be talking about that. These aren't necessarily people who came across the border. There are a lot of people here. Don't forget 9/11, where people who overstayed their visas. They weren't people who snuck across the border. Yeah, I can say, uh, yeah, I, I remember that. I remember also cops that stopped four of those uh, uh, people uh, on traffic violations, and then they let them go, and look what happened after that. But uh, there's all a lot, a lot of political uh, correctness going around here, Alan. You yeah. know that. All these politicians have their own opinion. The only yeah. thing I'm trying to say is to do something on, when these situations occur, do whatever you can to save lives before the cops show up. No matter what uh, it takes. I think the debate is whether or not more guns solve their problem or make the problem worse. But I, I always appreciate the debate, sir. Thank you very much for coming on our program this evening. It was a pleasure, Alan. Thanks for your time. That's Sheriff Joe Arpaio, Maricopa County. And uh, we'll be back in a moment at 877 allen